or starting on page 175, there's a, a personal story from a mother um, that talks about how her, her son was was seen locally playing football and recruited by an academy to come play. Um, and I, I asked Kevin, isn't the academy system ca- counterintuitive in the sense that they guarantee you that you know they're going to take care of your son during the beginning stages of everything, that while they're trying to bring you on, we'll take care of your son. You don't have to worry about anything. He's in good hands here. But in reality, the, as, a, as a young man growing up and trying to find yourself in the world, the things that he needs as a human aren't provided to him. The things that he needs to be, to be nurtured as if he was in his, 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 his own home with his, his mother, his parents, his, his, his siblings, whatever it may be. And that's not really provided. Then you, you, you fast forward years later and the lack of nurturing at a young age affected him as, as an adult. You know, the, the idea of him being released without an explanation after not being given the proper care he needed, not only as a player, but overall, uh, most importantly, as a person. Like, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, what is the goal of the academy in that sense? Like what, what? What is it? What is it really supposed to do? Is it supposed to? Are they? Are they really looking out for the player's best interest? That's a good question. I think that people have people have good intentions, um, but I don't feel. I'm trying to think of a way to say this. I don't feel they know how to do it. So what would happen is people say, "Look, we're going to develop these players emotionally. We're going to do this. We're going to do that." But they don't know how to. And on, on top of that, they've not developed themselves. And I'm doing a generalization here just to make the point clear. But what I mean by that is, is if I've got a player, for example, who is quite rebellious, have got an attitude. If I then say, oh, look at him. Who does he think he is? He thinks he's made it. He thinks he's a pro. Blah, 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 blah. What that player has done is that player has triggered something in me to then judge them. And once I have that judgment, I will then treat them differently. And the problem that we have is I'm the professional. So even though they're professional footballers, I'm the overseer. I'm the one who's supposed to kind of have these players and acknowledge the different needs. And actually the one who's the, probably who misbehaves the most, and I'm using misbehavior as an example because that's the most common, that's the one who needs the most nurture and attention. The moment I get upset or get angry, I've got to look at myself and look at where I need support or where I've got to do some reflection or get supervision, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that's why you touched on all of all of the key points there, and that's why I used that lady's story because she's the only anonymous person in the book, but it was it was the only parent, and obviously she didn't want to bring down the club, but she didn't want to also kind of expose her son. But you've picked up on all of the points that you know it was supposed to kind of ignite the conversation. So unfortunately, the, the system's still the same; it's reliant on individuals, you know. So I think that we've all. As, as, as young players, we all have experienced it in one way or another, whether it be for a prolonged period of time or just for, you know, uh, an instance. But it's, it's not something that really goes away. It's something that you, you remember for, for a while after because you're raised a certain way. And then if, if you think about it, you probably spend more time with the people, with people in football than you do at your, at your home. So the morals that you're taught as a, as a child in your home life, you expect to be reflected on the pitch and even even off the pitch in the locker room, so on and so forth with, with your coaches, whatever it may be. And when it's not, it's it, it, you have a personal conflict and you don't really know how to get over that. You don't know how to speak to about that because if you speak to your parents, they can't answer the question for you because you're not, they're not there with you. And if you speak to a coach about that, the coach can't answer you because they don't know what your home life is like. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what do you think they could do about it? So you guys tell me, if, if a coach is watching this right now and he's thinking, do you know what, I agree with them, what can I do? What, what would you say that the coach can do? Well, I think it's pretty clear when a child is having a hard time, especially when they're in their, their, their adolescent years. Like It's pretty clear. to it, It's shown not only on the field but off the field, how they interact with their teammates. So I think if... Uh, if, if a coach is proactive and sees this and can basically stop before it, it goes forward, having a simple conversation, you know, can, can fix everything. Okay. You know, addressing, addressing the problem as, as soon as possible yep. can, can completely change the situation. 
Not not that they overlook it and just say, oh, he's fine. Like, hey, he's going through a patch. No, that's not what it is. Mm-hmm. That's not what it is. Like, he's he's clearly uncomfortable. And you, as the as the supervisor of the team, need to need to do something about it. Like, that's your that's your job. That's part of your job. 